You mentioned about finding your comfort. You guys were able to do that really right off the jump. The first quarter is kind of what stood out with 41 points. How were you guys and what did you see in that first quarter that let you guys be so successful? Yeah, Megan, it, it ended up really being the difference in the game. Uh, our ability to be focused and uh, kind of, we talked about it before, you know, who was going to hit first. We decided to hit first and, uh, and it was like, multiple things, whether it was the rebounding piece, which we took care of in the first quarter, uh, the pace that we played with, um, sticking to the game plan, being in positions to help each other on their drive. So overall, really good approach to the game. And, and we got rewarded for it. Um, twofold, Jack. I mean, you talk about the rebounding in a big picture. I mean, for you guys to shoot as well as you do and usually give up, you know, more shots because yeah. of the rebounding. If you guys just find ways to even stay even on the glass, how dangerous can this team be? That's it right there, Brian. Like, we we probably won't be, you know, top five in the league in, in defensive rebound. That's probably not going to happen for us. But if we can just continue to inch our way from, you know, being at the bottom of the pack, our shooters who haven't shot the basketball well the entire year, they're going to come around. They're going to shoot the basketball. So eliminating the mistakes, the turnovers, that's the one piece that we can control. The fouling is the other piece that's the next challenge for us. We can even out the rebound game. We, we can be in good shape. And, I mean, from a micro point of view, when you go on that 15-0 run, I think you held them to 0 of 7 with a couple turnovers. I mean, what was the key there defensively for you? Yeah, we were really covering for each other. And... Uh, really getting the ball in the hands of the people who we wanted to shoot uh, and then showing a the crowd when they get the ball in the hands of the guys that they were trying to get the ball to. So overall, really locked in. Uh, that's what we showed at halftime. We were really locked into the game plan and uh, nicely done by the guys. Coach, uh, obviously uh, Joe, the last two games, has kind of been on a hot streak. Have you seen something different from him or is it just reps and time and his shot catching up? A, a little bit of everything. You know, uh, you know, I kind of talked about it pregame about um, it's not going to be linear for these guys. So Joe went from starting to the bench to one game playing 12 minutes to back to starting. And so uh, trying to really condition their minds to being able to be in any situation. I think he's getting used to it a little bit more. Uh, he's playing extremely hard that we talked about. He's an unbelievable person. So, you know, good things are really going to happen because he tries to do the right thing for his teammates every single day. And, and it's just the worm is turning a little bit. And, and second, just I'd be remiss not to mention 36-point league. I whittled down to, what, seven in the fourth. It was just you guys just taking the foot off the gas. Is that pretty much what you attributed to? Yeah, tough team to play with to finish the game, trapping, uh, playing different defenses. Um, yeah. You walk away with a win, you like a little bit more focus and uh, understanding from the group to finish the game, but uh, I won't be that greedy tonight, Christian. Jack, I got a two-porter for you. Just, you know, pregame, you were kind of mum on expectations for TJ. Just wanted him to go out there, have a good time, get his feet on him. Just given all that, how do you think he did in the time he got? Yeah, I thought really well. You know, I was interested in that first shot. What was it going to look like? How long? How short was it going to be? Was it going to hit the rim? That thing was beautiful to watch. So I, I think he enjoyed being out there. Uh, like I said, we had a short shoot around for him just to get acclimated a little bit. I thought overall, a really good night for him. And then you joked about that shooter and being his first real practice with the team. It also just happened to go that his first shift was with Edmund and Markeef, the only two guys who've played with him on the roster. How much of that was giving him some familiar faces around him versus just your shorthand, and that's kind of, kind of the way it worked out. Yeah, it's a little bit of both. So it was planned for him to have that first stint with Kevin, so just so Kevin can kind of carry that group so he could finish, and then uh, for him to be out there also without Kevin and see what that group looked like, which was pretty good. So, But the thought was, let's get him in with, there with Kevin, and maybe Kevin can attract a double team and he can get an open look. Just in terms of, of comfort and rhythm, do you find it uh, to be a little bit easier for Joe when he is starting the game? I'm really trying to get the guys to not lean on that. Uh, prime example is the other night we played, Cam Thomas did not play in the first half at all. And then he played 19 of 24 minutes in the second half. That's the mindset that we want to have. I had no problems, no qualms about putting Cam in tonight at the end of a game. And so that's what I want to get to is to have complete confidence in the group. And they have complete confidence that if they're starting, not starting, missing two games, playing five in a row, they're doing it for the sake of the team. Jock, obviously injuries are part of this deal, but specific to TJ after almost two years, how big of an emotional hurdle is it for him to just clear what he did tonight, get out there, and start playing again? Yeah, it's a, it's a huge hurdle. And I, I think if you strip it down to 
You know, he hasn't played in two years. He played four games two years ago. And uh, for him to get back out here in a professional game against a pretty athletic and long team and look and feel pretty comfortable out there, not look out of place, I hope that reassures him that he's done all the recovery. Uh, the people who have helped him get back to this uh, position in his life deserve a lot of credit, and he deserves a lot of credit for sticking with it. For Edmund Sumner, he came out with that right glute contusion. Is there any level of concern that that might be a long-term thing? Yeah, tell him to stop falling on the ground, Megan. Make the layup and stay on your feet, huh? <laughs> oh, I'll tell him. All that. right, so uh, ho hopefully we'll look at him tomorrow. Uh, hopefully it's nothing serious and we can move on. Good. All right, guys. Love that smile. You know, Frank, one of the first things he said was they decided to hit first, and they did, and yeah. it worked. Yeah, and I think he also talked about the game was really the first quarter. And, yes. You know, when Toronto falls behind 41-17, you're chasing the game all night long. Nick Nurse spent the entire game working the referees. And really for the Brooklyn Nets, think about it. They were 15 of 20 in the first quarter shooting. The rest of the game, the last three quarters, 29 of 62. So it really was – it's a difficult game because the Nets hadn't had a 24-point lead in the first quarter since March of 2013. So, that you know, you're not used to playing with a big lead like that. Toronto kind of thinks, well, we're probably not going to win this game. So just the, the ebb and flow of the game and just the whole dynamic of the game really changes. If you lose a game like this, if you're the Brooklyn Nets, it's an absolute disaster. So Toronto's playing kind of with house money because you put yourself in a position down 36 in the second quarter. You expect to lose. Let me tell you something. Jacques Vaughn was so happy midway through that fourth quarter when he when he probably knew that they were going to win because you could tell little by little Toronto was getting back in it but the Nets had done so well the first right. 18 minutes of the game pulling a 36 point lead they were lights out the first 18 it minutes. It buys you the cushion the rest of the Absolutely. way. He, he was cognizant of it. You know, Absolutely. Joe Harris falls out that's a problem. 100 percent and that's why again you know Joe Harris found out a terrific game but the size of Toronto mm -hmm. almost had an impact in this game. It fouled out Joe Harris it nearly fouled out Nick Claxton. Almost.